Welcome back, everybody. So before we dive into session three, I wanted to share a little bit about the grand prize. So the grand prize is to go on a Leaders Costa Rica retreat. And this is going to be in Dominical, Costa Rica, December 6th through the 11th, led by moi. And it's all about how to learn to run sold out retreats so you can make a difference and tra travel the world for free. This will be our third year in a row. It is at the gorgeous Imaloa Retreat Center. It is stunning there. They import Bali houses from Bali, 200 years old, and they're on the property. It's just exquisite. And here's the pool area. And then every morning we'll do yoga, meditation, breath work, sound bowl healing, uh, let's see, we go to do cer sacred ceremony. So the healing is, a, the morning is really about the healing. And then the afternoons, we'll go in and we'll learn all about how to run successful sold out wellness retreats. And this is a little bit of information. You can look at jennifergrace.com slash retreat mastery to read all about it. We've got the dome land, the bungalow hill. There's a VIP upgrade. Um, for the Bali houses, but it really is just such an incredible experience. The food is like four courses at every meal, five-star plant-based, like it's, it's unbelievable. So really excited. One of you is going to win this retreat, $3,500 prize at the end of today's session. For now, I want to introduce you to Joe Engelson, who will be co-leading with me session number three, Speak Up and Get Paid. And not only is she an amazing speaker and leader and transformational trainer, she is also my very best friend. Joe Engelson is the founder of TOFA and GT Trainings. She's a charismatic and joyful innovator, keynote speaker, who creates peace in the world in the field of transformation and technology. She is the author of the book Source Movement. In August 2010, Joe founded the GT Trainings, a four-month in-person leadership program, creating leaders who wanted to make a difference in the world by being the change. More than 20,000 people have attended her in-person trainings. All right. Hi, honey. Thanks for joining us all the way from Spain. What time is it right now? Um, it is 7.44. Oh, not too bad. PM. Not too bad. PM. Okay. No. Be Sometimes we're teaching it, you know, it's midnight for her and she's yawning. Well, you had lunch, I had dinner. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm excited and... Um, um, so let's let's just get going. So how many of you here would like to to get your message out to the masses to shine your light and just type in yes if that's you. Yeah, me, me, me. Perfect. Me works too. Uh, beautiful. And how many would like to actually get paid good money doing that? Me, me, me. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Well, I'm Jill Engelson, and I want to welcome you all to this next hour called Speak Up and Get Paid. Um, first, I want to acknowledge you all for being here because you could be anywhere today. You could be doing anything, but you chose to be here with, with Jen and, and me right now and all of the other awesome people on the call. So blessings and thank you for that. Now, I want to invite you to be here in a certain way. I want you to be here as if you are the creator of everything. Like, I create everything. Like, you created this event being put on. You cre created me sitting here, <laughs> talking to you, all of it. And if you're being here like that, like, you're responsible for everything that's occurring in this moment, why would you think could be available for you? Like, what could be available for you? Or even more specific, right? Let's at, let, let me ask you this. How could that stand or that perspective be valuable for a public speaker or a presenter or anyone wanting to shine their light upon the world? And I'll tell you why. It opens up the possibility and it gives you the power 
to create the results you want because you're creating it. It also holds you accountable to the results that you're creating. So let's say you've landed like a high paying keynote speaker gig. What attitude do you think would be most powerful? Would it be, you know what, if it's to be, it's up to me, or would it be, if it's to be, it's up to the venue, or if it's to be, it's up to the other speakers or, or the weather or whatever, right? Clearly, you'll create more power and, and, and be there in a more powerful way if you go with, if it's to be, it's up to me. So make a choice to be here as if you're it and that you designed all of this for you. And I know some of the people that won, won prizes are like, oh, I, you know, I manifested it. I intended it, right? So, so you want to be here like, I, like you created winning a prize. That's amazing. And if you did it, just feedback. And you might need to shift something. Maybe you need to learn to type quicker. <laughs> so it is my um, intention and Jen's intention today to have you leave this hour and the whole call inspired ready to take the next step towards your speaking career or whatever other avenue or modality you're choosing to, to shine your light. In fact, I'll even be as bold as to say, because you created being here today, the world will not be the same. Simply because you will hear something or maybe make a powerful choice today that will change the trajectory of not only your life, but also the lives of many others. So I'm an author, um, keynote speaker, and the founder of gratitude.com. Pre-COVID, I ran a big transformational leadership training company for 10 years. And now I've, I've moved my signature course, Rewired for Peace, online. So the way I like to, to look at life is that, that life is a game, right? And so the question I'm faced with every morning is, okay, life is a game. Here we go. I'm going to play this game. How do I want to win the game today? I want to win the game. So let me tell you three important notions that will support you to win the game of life. Ready? Okay. So there's essentially three main concepts that's going to have you win. And oh, they'll support you to win, I'll say, because there's probably millions of others, but they'll support you to win the game. So um, let's, and they are authorship viewing life as a game, and working with your creation. Okay, so authorship, viewing life as a game, and then working with your creation. So let's start with authorship. We talked about it a little bit earlier, right? Because the notion of I create everything is essentially, you know, I'm authoring everything. So about 10 years ago, even, even after I had attended all these transformational trainings, I'd been reading all the right books, I was still a little skeptical <laughs> to all the spiritual talk and I created everything, you know, I'm the generator, I'm source, right? And all that self-help work, I was skeptical because I, 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 I come from a, a place where I want proof. Like, sci like I come from inventors, like science is important. So I'm like, show me proof that I create everything because I still wanted to blame um, stuff outside of me for the results in my life or, or for what I saw in the world, right? I could not possibly be the one creating all that. Like I wanted proof. And one night I got the proof that I need it and I'm going to share that with you. So I had this dream and I, I was dreaming that I was at Starbucks because that's what I dream about. <laughs> and, um, and I was standing in line and going up to the counter and, and getting up there and I'm ordering my coffee and it's a beautiful day. And, you know, I get my double macchiati or, you know, just doing my thing, whatever I'm doing in my dream. And at some point in my dream, um, the I who was dreaming the dream created a guy coming up behind me that the little I that was in the dream couldn't see because I was ordering my drink. And so here comes this guy, but the little me get my coffee and I turn around. He was getting, he was a little too close. So when I turn around, he's like right there and he startled me. So I was like, oh, like that. And in that moment, I woke up. And in that moment, I was like, 
breathing, you know, my physical body was having this uh, effect of like, like I startled them is the word I'm going to use. You know, I was startled, like my heart was beating, my hands were sweating, and I was just like, oh, you know, feeling that anxiety of being startled. And then I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> Who, whose dream was this? I'm like, that was my dream, right? And, and I realized that, wait a minute, if I, if I can dream up something, right, that would have me have an experience in the physical awake world, like I did with being physically startled when I was awake, isn't it possible then that I can dream up traffic make myself like I'm forget about it, right? I dream up traffic, forget about that I'm the one that created the traffic. And then I drive into it and I'm like, you, you know, I'm all mad. Isn't it possible too, that I could um, generate uh, an amazing relationship that ends up in a horrible divorce, make myself forget that I was the one who created all of it and then be depressed and a victim to the whole relationship for like years. Right. So to me, then it actually is possible that I'm the one creating everything in my life. And I'm so brilliant that I can create it and then make myself forget that I did and then react as if it's real. Now, why would we do that? Right. <laughs> why would we create stuff? make ourselves forget that we created it and they get all worked up about it. Why? Because it's fun. Life becomes a game. Life would be boring. Can you imagine if you're like everywhere you go, you know, you created life and you remember what you created and you're just walking through it. You're like, Oh yeah, I know. I know that's going to end in a divorce. So I know that's going to, I'm going to win that, you know, price or you just know everything. That's no fun. So it's like, it's like Charles Darrow, right? Charles Darrow, who created Monopoly, okay? He was the guy that created Monopoly. So at some point, he was at his house, and he was like, you know what? I'm going to create a game. And so he makes all the little pieces, and he makes the board, and he makes all the little cards, all of it. And then he packages up in a nice little box that says Monopoly on it, and he goes down to his neighbor's house, and he sits down, and he goes, hey, you guys want to play a game? And so they sit down and they play this game and, and he's like, it's his turn. And he rolled the dice and then he's like, oh, pick a card. Right. So he picks a card and it's like, go to jail. And he's like, oh man, but he's the one that actually created that card. But he couldn't have fun playing the game if he knew too what card he was going to pick up every single time. So life is a game. And in the moment that you remember that you created it, made yourself forget, you're actually awake. You're actually remembering. So from this place, then, you can start to work with the game. You can work with your creation. You know, work with it rather than against it. So rather than reacting and resisting your world, you can now begin to um, respond right? Respond to everything, to begin to create with what's offered. And someone said, embrace it. Exactly. A really great tool to use when authoring your game of life is a distinction from improv called yes and. And so it's like yes and versus no but. So no but includes more like you're negating, you're rejecting, you're arguing, right? Doing the right or wrong thing. You're combative, you're resisting, right? That's the no but. So the yes and includes uh, like you're accepting offers, right? And you're building with someone's actions or, or the way of being. You're building from it and you're accepting it the way it is and you, and you create something more or, or, or you, you transform it into something else, right? So respond to and create with life, right? An example would be, of yes and would be, um, hey, um, I would love to take a walk with you in the park on Sunday. Does that work? 
right? So an answer could be, no, I've, I've way too much to do, uh-uh, right? But another, that would be a no but answer, right? It's just like, no, I have too much to do. It's already even in your way of being, right? Now, a yes and answer would be, say, you still have too much to do. So it's not like you're going to say yes just to please them. But a yes and answer would be, oh, yes, that sounds amazing. And I have all this stuff I need to finish today. Can we do it some other time? Now, imagine what you're creating in relationship with that person that asked the question, right? When you say no, or when you go yes, and blah, 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 blah. And this is really, really great too, to do with kids, which brings me to my third point, right? So really working with it and using the tool of yes and. So uh, my son Sixton, um, he, I was taking, he was like, I think he was like four years old and I was taking him to school and we're driving to school and he had this like huge Tonka truck in the backseat. Like it was like bigger than himself. And he's sitting there with the Tonka truck. He loved this thing. And so I'm like getting it, trying to get him out of the car. And he's like, you know, I'm bringing, I'm bringing my Tonka truck. And I'm like, no, you're not. Come on, let's go. And he's like, no, I'm bringing my Tonka truck. I'm like, no, you can't bring the Tonka truck to school. Like, da -da 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 -da. like I just kept going, no, no. And he just started getting more and more and more, uh, you know, insistent on keeping his Tonka truck and bringing it to school. And then it hit me. I remembered, right? Oh, my God. Okay. Yes, and so, so he said it again. He's like, I want to bring my Tonka truck. And I'm like, yes, honey. Oh my God, that is such a great idea. And your school doesn't let you bring toys to, inside. And he looks at me, he goes, oh. And he just puts the, the truck away. And because what happens when we're, we're living that no, we're no to life, it, it actually introduces rejection into beautiful relationships. Like in my, in my case with my son, all he heard was me rejecting his idea. And most people, after we hear no too many times, what happens? We stop asking, right? We stop asking. And more importantly, it stifles our creative process which is why many of you are here is to get that creative process out into the world, right? Into the light, be the light, shine your light. And instead you're, you're, you begin to respond to what's offered and then you create with it. Now, again, so with these three concepts, authorship, looking at life as it's a game and then working with your creation, I choose the game of life and I say yes to it and I plan to win it. And the question is, what game are you going to choose? Drop so the mic. Know, <laughs> drop <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, here, hold on. Do it. <laughs> so, um, so all of you know, obviously, Jennifer Grace, she, uh, she might not, I don't know if she said, she's an international speaker. She did her first TED talk, right? And like she said, she's also my best friend. And so I want to pass the mic to Jen right now. And, and you can keep me up or not, whatever you want to spotlight. I would yes. better doing this. I'm keeping you up. Yes. Keeping you up. Um, thank, you. thank you, Joe. That was, that was such a great example of a powerful talk. Why do you guys think that might have been a great example of giving a powerful talk. Now, Joe has actually given this talk on a stage before many different times as part of a keynote. Um, I would love to know what you thought was good about what she did. Why? So it was inspirational, good energy. She had good presence. She was authentic, relatable. Great. So a combination of anecdotes, good ex uh, good storytelling, confidence, AF. Yes, honest, engaging, great. So there's my love language. My love language is words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. This is amazing. I always have to tell her how great she is all the time, all the time. And mine is, um, mine is time together. What is that when when you want to spend time with somebody? Quality time. Quality time, which she can give me none of because she has two small children. So it's a good thing I'm self sufficient. So there we go. All right, so I'm, I'm noticing that you guys are commenting on different, you know, sides of giving a speech, right? 
there's the presence, there's the confidence, there's the relatability, the authenticity, and then there's also the speech, right? So we're looking at the speech and the speaker. And it's really important um, to kind of tone up all of those tools and processes to become a powerful speaker and also know how to write a powerful speech. And if you notice, she did a lot of storytelling inside of that. You know, during this session, we're going to break down exactly how to write a keynote speech, whether it's five minutes or 45 minutes. I'm excited to share that with all of you um, and how to open it and how to close it and all that fun stuff in between. But what a really important part of becoming a powerful speaker is the power of storytelling. So as speaker, we, we, we have files of stories, you know, so that we can grab a story and pin it with a point. You know, many of these speeches are, you know, telling three points, how to win the game of life. She had three points. She had three stories to go with those three points. And so having a really good kind of database of stories as a speaker is going to help you um, when you are trying to land a point during one of your speaking engagements, or if you're just an online presenter or an online trainer or a coach, it's really good to have stories to land the learning. So what we're going to do now is throw the ball actually over to you all so that we can start this process. So here we are. What we would like you guys to do right now is either for the next three minutes, write about a challenge that you overcame, write a story about a victory that you had, or write about the most amazing thing that you've ever accomplished. And we're going to give you three minutes to do that and begin. Perfect song.
are finishing up those last sentences. So we are going to need two volunteers. Um, who is open to volunteering? Let's see. We got Maggie and Carla typed in first. I love that you just, you know, went for it, ladies. Maggie and Carla are going to be sharing their stories, but... And, and yes, and <laughs> we're going to give you feedback while you share your story. So Joe, why don't we talk about the power of feedback? Yeah. So, so first off type in the chat, what, what, what is feedback? What do you think feedback is? Health. Central perspective, communication, way to improve, beautiful. And I saw someone said um, information, right? Because really it's, it's information at, at, at the core of it. And it can be neutral. In fact, I will assert that it is neutral because it's the experience of another of how you're showing up or how they're experiencing you. Now, if you have a whole room of people and only one person says something that doesn't really, you're like, I, that doesn't really land for me and it's only one person, you might want to let that roll off your shoulders and not take it personally, right? But if there's four or five people in that same group saying the same thing and you're like, it is still not landing for you, you may want to start taking a look. So feedback is something that is the most amazing gift <laughs> that you can actually have or get, uh, especially as a, as a public speaker and also in, in other areas where you're, again, shining your light, where, where you're out there, you put yourself out there. Feedback is key, which is why we want to kind of introduce that here. So there's a bunch of different components to feedback, especially when it comes to speaking. So you could be given feedback on your way of being you know, how, what's your beingness? Is it frazzled? Is it confident? You could get feedback on your body language. Like I talk with my hands a lot and sometimes that's not so good. And sometimes it is depending on the situation. I might have closed body or open body. Um, projection, you know, you can get feedback on how well are you projecting from the stage, the virtual stage or the real stage. Your tone and pitch, you ever hear somebody tell a story and they're totally monotone and then you just want to like kind of fall asleep versus a really, you know, well-versed speaker is going to be, you know, talking really fast and then slowing down to make a point and their voice is going to go up and down kind of like a song or a dance. Um, you can get feedback on were you or were you not connected to the material did we feel you feeling what you were speaking about? Feedback on skill and knowledge. Did you come off as a knowledgeable speaker? Um, I saw a lot of people put in the chat giving Joe feedback that she was very relatable, right? That's also something that I often, people tell me, Jen, you're so real. <laughs> well, of course, my best friend's going to be too. <laughs> Enrollment, were you enrolling people? And that doesn't mean selling like you're sitting there trying to sell them something, but were you enrolling them into, you know, actually agreeing with you or thinking, you know, maybe the speaker just wants you to leave, like having thought of something different. Were you able to enroll people into that? Um, the use of humor. Obviously, this is something that some of us are born with and some of us can craft that skill. Um, both Joe and I, when we met, we had something, uh, two things in common. We were both comedic improv actors and transformational leaders. So you can imagine that day when we met, it was instant love at first friend. 
we recognized each other immediately. And ever since then, we've been pretty much inseparable, except because she lives in Spain, but always in the heart. But we really did have a lot in our past to bring humor in. And sometimes if that's not naturally who you are, you may not want to use it. It's not everything, but it does make a speech really fun. And then presenting, pre presentation. But I don't mean like your actual presentation. I mean, how are you presenting yourself? Like the clothes that you're wearing, you're looking pro you know, professional and, and well put together. So that being said, we are now going to put Carla and Maggie on the spot. Put Carla and Maggie on the spot. And they had no idea that they were going to tell their story, but we're not playing small here. This is a thought leader shine your light summit. And no, they have not had time to rehearse. And they're going to be pretty much speaking extemporaneously. But in light of all of that, we are going to be coaching them and giving them some feedback on how they are speaking. So Maggie was the first one to press the buzzer without knowing what she was getting herself into. So I'm going to add a spotlight, add Maggie on here. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. And if you're not just seeing the three of us, you want to change your view to speaker view. How are you feeling right now, Maggie? I'm schwitzing. Like, seriously. Okay, good. Like, seriously. <laughs> My <laughs> schwinter is schwitzing. <laughs> well, like, take a deep I breath. Did, I did that 10x stages thing, and I, I won't open it up because I'm so scared. And they had a call out for speaking, and I'm like, nope, can't do it. And now I'm like, holy crap, what did I just do? Like, here I am. Okay, there so you here are. So do you want me reading what I wrote it, wrote, or just kind of going for it? Go for it. Just go for it. Just tell the and story. we're going to time you. We're going to give you, how many minutes should we give her, Joe, to tell the story? Three, four? Okay, Three. We'll, we'll give, I'll be mean. Three minutes to tell your story, <laughs> and I'm going to time you. Well, I only had three minutes to write. It's very short. It's not very long, so. All right. But speak from the heart. Speak from the heart. Go. In a five-year span, I lost five people in my life. These are the head people in my life. I lost my mom, my dad, my grandma. I lost my husband, and uh, I lost my surrogate mom, either to cancer or dementia, and very fast. My world was torn apart. I was in the middle of go getting divorced. All of this was happening. I was in school, believe it or not, to be in pastoral leadership. And I'm going through divorce. I'm losing my family. I'm a single mom. And I am trying to reckon faith with my life. And it was brutal. Um, it was such a dark time for me. And I find it, I found it so hard to make some sort of sense of what was going on in this world or why we were here. And it was just this time of, of loss extreme loss and nobody knew because I functioned. I went forward. I did the mom, the single mom thing. I made life happen, but I was dying on the inside. And it was one day I went to my parents' grave and I did this a lot because of obligation of you go to your parents' graves and I would put flowers on and I went there before Christmas feeling completely depressed because tradition, tradition and Christmas are two things together. And if their tradition isn't there, it's changed. And I stood on my parents' grave and I looked down and I thought, there's nothing left for me in this world. I'm done. There's, this is it. I'm done. And I had this moment where I'm looking down and I looked up. And I just saw a light and I said, no more, no more am I going to live this life. There is way more for me. I was not created for this. I'm created for destiny. I'm created for changing people's lives. I'm created to be somebody not looking at the graves. My poor parents, I stomped on their graves and I, I, I'm sure that they applaud me for it, but it was a moment for me of reckoning with me to say, where am I going? What am I doing? How am I changing my life? I became a, a lay pastor. I've become a nurse. I am in the Clarity Catalyst. I am a certified life coach. I have changed who I am because I took a moment to grieve life and the loss of life. 
And I said, no more. I made a cutoff point and said, that's it. It is time to change who you are. And I think we all have that possibility just to change who we are because we're not designed to be stuck. Drop the mic. What? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. <laughs> that, that feedback. Was Let's give her feedback in the chat. What worked? What didn't work? Let's just be honest. Like for me, what worked was your authenticity. I felt it. I felt you were relatable, coming from the heart. Mm -hmm. um, what didn't work for me was this is the first time you're doing this with us, though. Lots of ends. I didn't even and shower. Now. <laughs> <laughs> presentation didn't work for me. <laughs> it's presentation. <laughs> it shouldn't. You have a bra. On. Like seriously, I'm just. I'm just the fact just that your bra list did not work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what about you? What worked? What didn't work? Yeah, I, I, I think it was amazing. All like overall, for sure. Um, you were definitely connected to, well, actually you were connected most of the time to what you were saying. There were times where I could, I could see you going from your heart back up in your head. Mm -hmm. And then you would, there was even a point in the beginning when you were talking about the death, where it, it almost sounded like your voice almost was going to cry. And it was very relate, like it was very connected and that was phenomenal. Uh, uh, but again, to try to keep that connection throughout. Uh, you were also, and I think this was probably because you were put on the spot and a little nervous. You were breathing, like there was, a little, you know, yes, and going wrote in the chat. Take a breath, breathe. Yeah, take a breath, and 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 going fast. Like it, one of the scariest thing as a public speaker, that once you master it, is not scary at all because it helps you think of what you're going to say next, right? Is pr like pause, like really long pauses. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. I just. I know you said, mm -hmm, but I actually did it then. Like you could just, just stop, right? And, and allow people to sit with it. And then it's, it's funny because some people would be like, they'll get uncomfortable because you're quiet, but you're not. You're just like dropping the Like an the example, bomb. When, when she said, when I stomped on their graves and like, when you say something like that, like that mm -hmm. can be like, and then you go back into it. Yeah, and 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 the knee jerk that most people have is that when we say something that is like scary to say in some cases, we're gonna start talking right away because we don't want to leave that that thing out there. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most powerful things. So I I, you know, like what you said could easily be an, an amazing like five minute talk um and and just get connected with it and you know, wear a bra. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, and sure. also, <laughs> and also um, it could be a great story to land a point in mm -hmm. something of like, you know, overcoming a situation. And here's something that, you know, happened to me. And then it could land uh, using that story to land a point. In a right. It's, it, yeah. It's like, here's why I have chosen to shine my light. And right. then you tell that story, you know, like that would just be like, yeah, perfect. Thank you. How did that feel for you to do that with everybody? Is it reignited your love for speaking? And are you ready to rock? Oh, I, I have the love for speaking, but I don't do it. And, and I've told you that. Um, does it reignite? Yeah. You know what? That that thing that stirs up inside me and it just makes me, I, I, I like, again, I felt like, okay, I'm on stage. Woohoo. There I'm here. I love the space, you know, but I don't go in that space ever. So it's like when I'm there, I know that that's where I'm supposed to be. It's always that reminder to me, get back there, like get into that space, you know, cause that's where you shine the most. And, you know, that, that's been all part of this process of going through, you know, literally the shit that, that is keeps me down here all the time. So yeah, no, it's, it felt, it felt good, you know, and I hope this is recorded because I didn't write down any of your feedback. It is, it is, and I'll get it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's yeah. give her a jab. She can't hear us. Wait. Yeah. One thing, just to give you. Thanks. All right, let's get back to our session. All right. So, how to write a speech. Um, there are some components to keep in mind when we are writing a speech. You want to have an opening 
then you're going to go to the body of the speech, the summary, and then the final close. And this is a really nice formula to use. It is not necessary to always use this formula, but especially in the beginning of you know, coming into the world of, of speaking and becoming a speechwriter and giving presentations. It's a really nice formula um, that makes it a little bit easier, especially in the beginning of your career. So we're going to break down all four of these so that you can understand them a little bit better. The first is the opening. All right. So the first thing you could do is you could start with humor and tell a joke. Okay, so today I conquered my fear of public speaking and I gave this passionate and powerful speech about how no one likes a quitter. And then they kicked me out of the AA meeting. <laughs> I'm laughing. My own joke. Two shocking statistic. Did you know that the longest tennis match lasted for 11 hours and five minutes and it was contested over three days? I did not know that. Or you can open with two enrolling powerful questions. Who in here has ever experienced multiple orgasms? And if not, who in here wants to learn how? <laughs> I guess we're now realizing why she's my best friend. She's out of her mind just like me. Here we go. Share a powerful quote. Open with a quote. All endings are also beginnings. We just don't know it at the time. Mitch album. Nice one. Never heard that one. I don't know. Me neither. Use a prop or a, a visual aid. <laughs> I hope they can even see me. <laughs> or loud and fun music to get them dancing. Dun, 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 dun. You don't have any music? Oh my I God. Forgot. I forgot <laughs> to put the music. <laughs> But y'all can imagine. Thank you for playing with me, Joe. I appreciate you. All right. Then we're going to have the body. And if you remember listening to Joe's little mini talk, she had, you know, she had how to win the game of life. And then she had three points and she had three stories to go with those points. Some of them um, were examples. Some were personal stories. And so here's good things to keep in mind when you are building the body of your story. The first thing, always identify the main message or theme of your speech, making sure it's clear and concise. You don't want people in the audience go, what are they talking about? What is this even about? You know, she kept on even saying this is about how to win the game of life. And she would go back to that a few times during the speech. So you really knew what the main message was. Using evidence and examples to support your message. This can include personal stories, statistics, research. So if you're going to do in the body three points, you want to have for each of the point either some stories, statistics, or research to go along to land the point. Use powerful and emotive language to engage the audience to make your message more impactful. Use storytelling techniques to capture the audience attention and keep them engaged on the edge of their seats. Use repetition to help drive home your main point. There's a thing that we talk about in speaking is, you know, tell them, tell them what you told them and tell, well, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them so that you're really being repetitive into it, driving home the main points. Use rhetorical questions to make the audience think about your message and how it applies to them. I think you did a rhetorical question at the end of yours, Joe, that it wasn't that we were going to answer it, but just kind of like, so what do you think? Use transitions to smoothly move from one point to the next. So those are great tips to keep in mind when you're building the body. And then the summary, this is before you close, this is before the mic drop, right? You want to go back and summarize the main points of the speech and their importance. You want to use kind of like bulleted points, short paragraphs to organize your summary and let the audience know you're wrapping up. Nothing weirder than 
somebody on stage or on screen who just stops and you're like, is it over? It's very awkward. So kind of like, in, so in summary, in closing, so before we wrap up today, I just want to leave you with that kind of thing. So they're knowing that the end is coming. And then the mic drop is, you know, end with a call to action, end with a powerful quote or phrase, or just end with any questions. You can open up for questions. So that's a nice little formula in creating a five minutes, 10 minute, 45 minute, one hour talk, keynote or speech. So let's talk about now you've created this talk. How do you get speaking gigs? How do you get paid to speak? And we'll go over these one by one, but just high level. One, just create a speaker's one sheet. This is kind of an industry standard. If you're submitting yourself to an event, to a conference, um, people are going to ask you for your one sheet. So you want to have that prepared. They're also going to ask you for a speaker's reel. Um, they want to see you on stage, you during a webinar presentation, so that they know that whoever they're hiring actually knows what they're doing. And then the third is once you create that speaker's one sheet, once you have a speaker's reel, and of course you've written your talk, you're ready to reach out to events and conferences to get yourself booked. So here's an, uh, one of my speaker's one sheet. Now this, um, I actually was using more to speak on television. Um, this wasn't one where I was using it to get booked at conferences. Um, I put this one together during COVID and I was being brought on to a lot of different um, news stations to speak about how to deal with the pandemic, uh, mental health, mindfulness, emotional intelligence. So you can see that my talking points were really looking at a lot of, you know, things that people were dealing with, you know, the science of happiness, working remotely, overcoming worry, building resilience, coping with uncertainty, dissolving disagreements in the home because everybody was, you know, quarantining and cooked up together, and then also overcoming procrastination. And then what I did was in my JG still reel, that is a clickable link. And of course, I made this in Canva that would go right to my speaker's reel. So they can see, you know, me doing things on television or live on stage. And then also these are all clickable links for them to go and see me on, on these different, you know, here's her TED talk, here's when she was on NBC, you know, here's her a sample of her radio show. So obviously I did not have a speaker's uh, one sheet like this when I started out. You know, it was, didn't have any of this media stuff on there, but I, you know me, I'm the little engine that could every year, another one got put on there. Another one got put on there. Another one got put on there. So in the beginning, you may have nothing. You may just have your speakers reel and all different topics that you can speak on. And that is enough. That is absolutely enough. This is 14 years in the making, this speaker sheet. A speaker's reel. So again, this is something that over time, you know, I can go back to all these conferences, my TED talk, my radio show, and just very easily pull things together for a speaker's reel. But when I work, when Joe and I work with new students, they don't have a reel. They don't have a reel at all. So what we recommend is to just show up anywhere and everywhere, online, in person, for free. You know, if you go work, at, excuse me, go do a talk and you know, at the Chamber of Commerce, or if you're teaching a webinar, or whatever you're doing, you want to film yourself. And you could just pull little clips. It's not that you're going to show them the entire hour, you're just going to get one really nice moment where you landed something. And it was just like one of those great, you know, speaking moments, and you'll just clip that. You can also do a mock speech with friends and family and film yourself. Because you know, there is a feeling when there's a real live audience 
And so just getting some friends and family together, filling, you know, your living room and then speaking because we're a lot more animated, you know, when there are other people in front of us. So you can mock that up as well. You can also pull from webinars that you have from the past of you speaking and teaching, especially when you're nailing something and really landing the learning and you know that it like metaphorically, it really sounded good. And that would be a good clip to add to your speaker's reel. And then you can edit small clips of all of these things onto one, you know, three to five minute speakers reel. And of course, you can always get, you know, learn how to do that, which I teach people how to edit themselves and all. You can also go on Upwork or Fiverr and just, you know, say, hey, from minute one to minute 107, pull this from here, you know, and just direct them where to do it. And then they can put together the speakers reel for you. And then finally, how to um, find events and conferences. So just by attending them is a really great place to start, right? You're going to go to different events and conferences, network with people that are there, find out who the event planner is of that event, see if they're doing it next year, are they at any other events coming up, um, join a professional organization like a BNI, or there's also great, you know, speakers, bureaus that are local that you can join. Uh, many of these groups have annual conferences or events where they book speakers. They may not be looking for ex and they may be looking for experts in your field. And then you can go online, lots of resources for event directories, conferences, websites, social media groups. This could be a great way to find conferences that are looking for speakers. Um, reach out to event planners, conference organizers people that are doing this for a living and just say, hey, I would love to speak at any events that you have coming up. Here's my reel. Here's my speakers one sheet. Um, you can also create your own speakers events, right? You can do this yourself. And if you can't find the right opportunities on your own, I'm always about that. Like host your own webinars and workshops and other events um, or collaborate with other coaches. And then finally, utilize online platforms you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, other professional networks to promote yourself as a speaker and the topics that you have to speak on. So who in here wants to go as far like you're, you like really one day, whether it's now or later, want to do a TED Talk? Who's the me's in the room who are like wanting to do a TED Talk? Awesome. Oh, I'd love to see so many. So landing a TED Talk. Um, I think the Smartest thing to do is to apply first to local events in your area. They like when you live there because then you don't have to fly in for the dress rehearsal for the, you know, there's, there's a bunch of rehearsals leading up to it. And it just gets a little problematic when people don't live there. You're not going to get paid to do a TED talk. This though can help you get paid as a speaker. If they see that, oh, they're a published author, oh, they've done a TED Talk, they're going to hire you. Those are good things for credibility to get hired, to get paid to speak. So first, you know, search all the local uh, TEDx events, um, go to them, show up at them, meet, meet the people, because they're always the same people every year that, you know, the guys that do the TEDx at Young Circle in Hollywood, they do it every year. So it's good to meet them and network with with the organizers that are leading these TED Talks, find out, you know, who's speaking at these, become friends with them, network with them. And then every year they'll change the theme to these local TED Talks. Um, find out what the theme is and see if it's going to work with what kind of talk that you want to put together. It may not, you know, it may be like engineering and you're like, this is not for me. You know, but maybe it's something like I had three ideas for three different TED Talks. And then um, the the one about kids, why mindfulness should be just as important as math in our school system that I did fit well with the theme of this particular um, TEDx event. When you're applying, you want to have a clear description of your talk, uh, why it is an idea worth spreading why you should be the one to deliver it um, based on your life or professional experience, 
Um, be ready with links to your website, links to your one sheet, links to your speakers reel. Um, if you miss the deadline for that particular event, uh, then contact them and see when next year's submission is coming up. And then um, when submitting, remember that your presentation should not be a sales pitch. You're not sitting there like selling your courses and programs like that's a big no no in the TED world. Um, and then apply to multiple events. I actually applied to two and I got the second one. So you never know, it could take you 10, it could take you two, but just put your head down and keep applying. When you apply to the first one, copy and paste what you wrote so that the second time it's not gonna take as long. You will have already had the answers to cut and paste in there. All right, who is ready for the next Shine Your Light Prize? What do we think it's going to be? Probably <laughs> hang out with Joe and I. Yes. <laughs> the Speakers Academy. It's actually now called the, the Speakers um catalyst in the shine your life but joe and i have been doing the speakers academy for years we have extraordinary results with our trainers um, we've done this online we've also done it in person over a weekend the way that we're going to be doing in the shine your light summit it will be over eight weeks so it gives you plenty of time to hone your skills and in this online course by led by both of us, you will discover how to overcome fear, develop courage and confidence on stage or during any online presentation, create compelling keynote speech that you can deliver and get paid for, learn how and where to apply to become a TEDx speaker to get more credibility as an expert or coach, have fun with improv games so you can become more relaxed, spontaneous, quick-witted when you present, get access to resources, event, conference listings, so you can apply and get paid to speak. So we're going to have the listings of where all the TED Talks are, conferences, and all this good stuff, so you don't have to drive yourself crazy trying to find all that stuff. Learn the business of building your brand and creating your speakers reel. And this is my favorite. Have an opportunity to perform your TED Talk, because we're going to create our own little TED Talks during one of our quarterly virtual mic drop events, which Joe and I are launching this year to an audience for at least a hundred or more. I mean, we think there'll be about a thousand, but I don't want to, I like to <laughs> promise, not over. <laughs> and more importantly, you can use this for your speakers reel. So I thought it would be fun for us to play um, from one of our graduate classes of the Speakers Academy. Just completed the Speakers Academy. It was an incredible experience. I was shy, confused, and had no idea what I was doing in front of a crowd. And I just gave my first TED Talk. It felt so real. And I just discovered a woman in myself that I had no idea was there. It was incredible. Hey everyone, my name is Abhi Valdurthi. I just finished Speakers Academy, focused on being a speaker and facilitator on stage. And I loved it. It was so transformative because it reminded me to tap into my energy and the inside because it is inside me that the voice comes out and I want to use this power that I generate to transform the world with my voice. To say that I feel confident in front of a room speaking is an understatement. I came in super nervous, super anxious, and now I feel like I can own a room. The value I received and the connections I created are unforgettable and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. The Speakers Academy revealed a part of myself that I didn't know was there. I didn't know that I could master a five minute talk or be able to stand in front of people confidently and get my point across. This opened up a new part of me and I'm really happy that went. Hi, my name is Adriana Foster and I just completed the Speakers Academy. I had such a wonderful time and I just completed my first TED Talk. The transformation that I saw in the people in my class was out of this world. I mean, we came in with so much nervousness. Some people was the first time ever for them in a stage and by the end of the second day, they were pros. I was so inspired. This is an amazing course. I would recommend it completely. Okay, here's the question. What was three out of the six ways you can open a 
speech. Type it in, guys, and go. Maggie was the first one, but it's wrong. It is? Yeah, she's wrong. Jessie. Oh, no. Wait, let's see. Jesse, hold on. Let me go back right under Maggie. Yeah. These are coming in so fast. Humor, stats, and music. <laughs> I think Jesse won. Yep. Jesse, you're the winner. And if you didn't win, um, you can book a call with me and find out more about how you can take the book catalyst, the podcast catalyst, the speakers, the retreat, the social media. Just go to jennifergrace.com slash chat. We can get on a one-on-one -on -one call this week and I can tell you all about it. And of course, if you're here at the summit or listening to the recording, you're going to get up to 40% discounts on all of these courses when you book a bundle. All right, everybody. I think it's time for a dance break with Eski. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back for more. This time, we're going to move our bodies. We're going to do a session of shaking it out, shaking out whatever doesn't serve us and letting in what does. So when you're ready, please meet me in the middle and move those hips. Just like that. Remember, there's no right way. There's no wrong way. Your body is your body. Arms up. Arms up. Taking out whatever doesn't serve you. Whatever doesn't serve you. Slow it down, right hip forward. We're gonna shake it out. Shake out fear. Is it fear? Shake it out. Move it through the body. Intentional movement helps energy move out of your body. Left side, go. Shake out all of the energies that have ever held you back. Back to center, anything that has held you back. Whether that's from becoming the best speaker of your life, from writing your book, take it out, do it to me. Take it out of your shoulders. Is it fear, is it doubt? Whatever it might be, let it move out of your body. Let it move, shake it out. No one's looking. Let it move, let it move. Let it move and release. Let it go, let it go. And slow it down. Let's let in. What do we want in its place? What do we want? What will help you to accomplish your dreams? Is it love? Is it courage? Is it strength? What is it for you that will allow you to spread your wings and fly? To spread your wings and accomplish your goals. Speed it up. Go. No right way. However you move your body, she is yours. Go. Beautiful. Letting in fun. Why not? Letting in joy. Thank you for joining me for another round. Thank you for moving with me. Beautiful. I'll see you soon.